Kennedy. CNBC anchor John Harwood, who was outed by WikiLeaks for colluding with the Clinton campaign against Republicans, took some time yesterday to list why the Democrats suffered so many losses during President Obama's two terms in office. Harwood tweeted that one of the reasons was in part, quote, Obama's race amid white fear of cultural change. President Obama has also echoed the same type of sentiment over and over again. Watch this. If you accept the support of Klan sympathizers, if, if they, they say they really like what you're doing and you're kind of slow to denounce or separate yourself from them, that's what you're going to do when you're in office. He may up the ante in anti-Muslim sentiment, but if you look at what the other Republican candidates have said, that's pretty troubling too. You know, we've had to deal with racism, or conflict between races, ethnic groups, uh, new immigrants. That especially becomes a problem when the economy is not doing well and so people feel stressed. And typically when people feel stressed, they turn on others who don't look like them. And joining me now with reaction is Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark and Tea Party Forward Chairman Niger. And gentlemen, thanks for being here tonight. I know it's really unbelievable, isn't it, Niger? Well, it's not only unbelievable, Kimberly, but it's a lie. Mm -hmm. This president, on average, got a higher percentage of the white vote than any Democrat has in 50 years. And the real tragedy of the Obama years is not that just that this racial har harangue uh, is, is now back in fashion, but that you've got a killing field in his very own backyard of Chicago. He came into office with Chicago being a killing field. He's leaving office with Chicago. Chicago being a horrific killing field for black and brown families. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Sheriff Clark, always great to see you too. And uh, we have these numbers here. Uh, Chicago murder since 2009, 3,904 lives lost. And these numbers come from the Chicago Police Department. It's unbelievable. It's a war right here on our streets in this country. And Black Lives Matter is nowhere to be found. Look, is it January 20th? Is it close to January 20th? Can we buy <laughs> the remaining time Obama has left? Can we buy him out like buying out a contract? Right. Look, this guy has continually, continually for eight years, rubbed the stain of slavery, rubbed white people's nose in the stain of slavery. He's done it for eight years. These are we're about 150 years removed from slavery. Nobody said forget about it, but you have to be able to move on at some point and he will not allow America to do that and until he leaves the White House we're going to continue to have to put up with this nonsense people are tired of it they proved it on November 8th Latinos black people white people and other ethnicities have said we've had enough of this racial divide in America and they really want to move on from it but this president will not allow them to do that you know, and Niger, many people think that President Obama helped interject race into this presidential election in 2016. Well, you know, I, I think he did, unfortunately, and he wasn't alone in doing so. Race and sex, you know, it's always easier to throw up artificial scapegoats mm -hmm. and point the finger of blame and tr instead of taking responsibility. You know, he's right now he's got an administration that's going to war against our strongest ally in the Middle East, and he has his very own Gaza Strip in his own home, adopted hometown of Chicago. It's a disgrace. You know, there's a great reporter, Amber Randall, happens to be African-American who wrote about this. And in the 11th district alone in Chicago, there were 91 killings last year. That's more than mid-sized, most mid-sized cities. How about that, taking responsibility for that? How about leaving that as a legacy, as opposed to pointing the fingers at Israel and Republicans and the NRA and the white guy? And it's nonsense. Yeah, it's unbelievable, Sheriff Clark. And then, of course, you know, the struggles that law enforcement has had under this administration as well. You know, it's been an ugly chapter in American history. This uh, supposedly post-racial president has been exactly the opposite. And it's going to continue even for the next couple of weeks. But you look at what's going on in Chicago, as you mentioned. 
you know, that there's, there's no uh, sense of urgency about what's going on from him. And then you get the one uh, questionable police shooting or even a wrongful police shooting, the anomaly that happens and all of a sudden, you know, all Americans are racist. And if you deny, if you're white and you deny you're racist, then he brings out the implicit bias and he says you're in denial about it. So, you know, the f sooner that we can move on from this ugly chapter in American history and presidential history, he's been one of the most race-obsessed presidents in modern history, but the sooner we can move on from this. He went and took that scar, that healing scar of slavery. He reopened it and poured salt in that wound. This, it, people are tired of it. Like I said, they, they voiced their opinion of it on November 8th, but on his way out the door, he wants one last kick of sand in the face to the same people that elected him, many white people. How unbelievable. Gentlemen, it's such a pleasure to have you here with us tonight. We do thank you for your time. And coming up, we need your help.